What unsolved mystery gives you the creeps? Part 5. If you like the kind of content we create, please subscribe, like, and share our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Dyatlov Pass Incident. The Dyatlov Pass Incident, Russian Gibel Tour Group at Dyatlova, refers to the unsolved deaths of nine ski hikers in the northern Ural Mountains in the Soviet Union, now Russia, between 1st February and 2nd February 1959. The area in which the incident took place was named Dyatlov Pass, in honor of the group's leader, Igor Dyatlov. The experienced trekking group, who were all from the Ural Polytechnical Institute, had established a camp on the slopes of Kolat Shiachl when disaster struck. During the night, something caused them to tear their way out of their tents and to flee the campsite while inadequately dressed during a heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperature. After the discovery of the group's bodies, Soviet Union investigators determined that six victims died from hypothermia and that the three others showed signs of physical trauma. One victim had a fractured skull. Another had brain damage but no sign of an injured skull. Additionally, the tongue and eyes of a team member were missing. The investigation concluded that an unknown compelling force had caused the deaths. Several explanations have been put forward as to the cause of the deaths. They include an animal attack, hypothermia, an avalanche, infrasound-induced panic, military involvement, or some combination of these. Access to the region was closed to expeditions and hikers for three years after the incident. Account 2. A man takes out an ad on Craigslist telling people to show up for a job wearing a certain outfit that include the same color shirt, hard hat, and dust mask. Instructed them to be at a certain place in order to earn some 25 air. A man robs a bank wearing the exact same outfit, runs into a crowd where everyone looked the same. They never found the bank robbers. The creepy thing is that this worked and could work again and again. Account 3. The Oakland County Child Killer, who terrorized the Detroit suburbs in 1977-78. He murdered two girls and two boys. After the parents of one then-missing victim said they'd give their son his favorite medal of Kentucky Fried Chicken when he got home, his body was found. An autopsy showed that he'd been fed fried chicken before he was murdered. The killing stopped after the son of a prominent GM executive, allegedly, committed suicide. The guy had connections to several other creepy and well-connected characters, some of whom used a sham charity as a means of finding young boys to sexually assault. The case is the rabbit hole to end all rabbit holes. Account 4. The Voynich Manuscript. Some Polish antique book merchant found this book in an Italian monastery about 130 years ago. To this date, no one has been able to interpret the language the book is written in. The book is full of elaborate and bizarre illustrations and seem to cover a number of scientific subjects. Several academic and military codebreakers have had a go at it, with no luck. It is now stored at an American university library. It was long thought that the book might be a hoax, but it has now been carbon dated to around 1500 AD, at a time when many thinkers, e.g. da Vinci, were known to write in code to secure their ideas. No manuscript has proved this hard to decipher, and author, meaning, and purpose remain unknown. The manuscript is fully scanned and available online. Account 5. In the late 80s, there was a boy murdered two streets away from me. We live in an upscale, small suburban town. He was stabbed multiple times and the scene was described as gruesome. There was no sign of break-in, so when he got home from junior high, someone must have come in after him or was waiting for him. But then again, no break-in. There was no motive. He was just a little boy. I guess there was an investigation, but that turned up nothing. I've searched the internet by this was all pre-internet existence, so there wouldn't be much anyway. Gosh, that always freaked me out. So weird and scary. The parents moved, and I never really heard what came of it. Count six. Well, I am late, and this will probably be overseen, but whatever. Bradford Bishop. Ex-CIA agent who just snapped one day and murdered his whole family. Then drove the bodies over 200 miles to burn them. He was then last seen with a black woman. Last seen all over Europe several years on place one on the FBI's most wanted list, and he is still on the loose. 
Additional fact. The sheriffs described the kids' room in which they were murdered with a sledgehammer as the most horrifying thing they have ever seen. Account 7. The Paris Catacombs. Many people went in, some never came out. Also, there's this found footage video of some dude going in, panicking, dropping his camera, and vanishing into the darkness. But I can't tell if it's fake or not. There's things pointing in that direction. There's things that make the whole thing believable. Anyhow, I find the catacombs to be creepily fascinating. Account 8. The possibility that Jack the Ripper and H. H. Holmes were the same person. It would be like finding out murder Batman and murder Superman were the same super super murderer. H. H. Holmes was in London at the time of the murders, possessed all the necessary skills and fit the detective's deductions that he would be a surgeon or medical student. After he left England, the murders stopped and Jack the Ripper was never seen again. Back in Chicago, H. H. Holmes built his murder hotel to turn almost every bedroom in his hotel into an efficient murder chamber. He had gas lines lead into the room so he could asphyxiate guests. He would also lock them up in soundproof vaults and let them starve to death. He'd surgically remove the skeletons of his victims and sell them as medical props to medical schools for extra money. He also killed people for insurance scams. Of course, that's where the theory falls down. H.H. H. Holmes seemed to always kill for monetary gain, while Jack the Ripper seemed to do it in order to create sadistic and gory art projects. Still, though, imagine if we found out it were true. Account 9. Star Palumbo. As featured on Unsolved Mysteries, a woman moves to Reno to purse a new life. Long story short, mixes with the wrong people and comes up missing. Her car was discovered with drawings on the inside depicting her tied and gagged with bloodshed. Police also find letters she wrote stating the government was put to get her. Lastly, they found books on how to change your identity in the car. Perhaps not the creepiest, but it always irked me. Account 10. Green Children of Woolpit. The legend of the Green Children of Woolpit concerns two children of unusual skin color, who reportedly appeared in the village of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, sometime in the 12th century, perhaps during the reign of King Stephen. The children, found to be brother and sister, were of generally normal appearance except for the green color of their skin. They spoke in an unknown language and would eat only raw, broad beans. Eventually, they learned to eat other food and lost their green color, but the boy was sickly and died soon after his sister was baptized. The girl adjusted to her new life, but she was considered to be very wanton and impudent. After she learned to speak English, the girl explained that she and her brother had come from a land where the sun never shone, and the light was like twilight. According to one version of the story, she said that everything there was green. According to another, she said it was called St. Martin's Land. Account 11 the mass murder that took place in Ohio 2017, all involving members of the same family. This was a major story for weeks. Governor John Kasich took time off from his presidential campaign because of it, and then gradually disappeared from the news cycle as the leads dry it up. The police are still no closer to solving it. These are... Account 12. Madeleine McCann. I know there's theories, and personally I'm pretty sure it was her parents' negligence that lead to her death, so they covered it up. I don't think they killed her out of malicious intent or on purpose, but she definitely died in their care, or when she was supposed to be in their care, and instead of owning up to the tragedy, they presented it as a missing girl's case, and the fat tabloid checks probably helped their guilt. Account 13. Sasquatch tens of thousands of eyewitnesses and encounters over hundreds of years, some of them more than one witness at a time, so that would limit misidentification or hoax. Hair samples and scat that have been identified as unidentified primate, and the footprints, footprints that have been found to be as long as 18 inches or longer, footprints found in the most desolate parts of the forest where no man has been or was supposed to be. Yet still, with all the advancements in technology in today's day and age, there is still no live or dead body. The pictures are amateur at best, and the scientific world laughs at the notion of such a creature despite the evidence of its existence. Account 14. The Atlas Vampire. 
In the 1930s, police found a dead prostitute in Stockholm, Sweden, in her bed. They noticed that there were two puncture holes in her, and all the blood in her body was completely drained. They also found a condom in her rectum, and she had suffered blunt force trauma to the head. I suppose that the killer struck her with something blunt over the head, which knocked her out mid-sex, sucked out all her blood, and booked it. There's a freaking vampire out there, people. Account 15. The Tainong North Serial Killer. Six girls were found dead over various locations in the 80s. They never caught the bloke. A couple of bodies were just down the road from where I used to live. Besides the fact the guy was never found, locals who were around at the time all report 12 bodies, not six. I'd also like to point out, local old-timers I've asked about it swear blind they knew who it was, but aren't willing to risk their families to step up.